Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Two weeks ago, I started a petition that is urging the FCC to save free over-the-air TV. And the reason why it needs saving is because the broadcasters are rolling out a new standard. And although the standard is much better insofar as picture quality and reception are concerned, it also allows them to encrypt their broadcast signals optionally, but many are opting in to do so. And here in my home state of Connecticut, my CBS affiliate is now completely locked down Nobody in the state can actually watch this because they haven't authorized anyone to decrypt the signals yet. So when you tune in, this is what you get. Yet, the FCC is, you know, giving public airwaves to these stations. And what they're trying to do is get people steered back into subscription plans where they make most of their money now. Now, the news here is that the FCC actually responded to a complaint that I filed in regards to this related to the petition. And they have some advice for us as to how we can get our message out to the FCC commissioners more effectively, and we're gonna step through that in this video, so let's get to it. So let's first take a look at the email that we got from the FCC. This actually came from one of the people responsible for organizing the regulatory efforts around the transition to ATSC3, and she provided two important links. One is that the FCC has put together a public-private initiative to look at the overall picture here and figure out what the path will be. What's happening right now is the broadcasters are pressuring the FCC and Congress to get this transition done as fast as possible because it does cost them more money to support the old standard and the new standard at the same time. And this is also why they're speeding up the encryption process here because they wanna have everything locked down for when the FCC finally gives them the authorization to do a formal transition. Now, the other thing that this person shared with me was a link to where we can file comments on the docket that she is overseeing for this particular issue. And if you go over to lon.tv slash ATSC file, it will bring you to the express comment page where you can leave a comment that's going to appear in the public record. And this is what the commissioners are going to be looking at. The only thing you have to do, and I'll put some instructions up on my blog as well, is for the preceding number, you wanna type in 16-142 that you see there, and then you click on the name of the filing that will appear when you type that in, and then from there you put in your information and your comment. One thing I wanna note about this though is that they do want a US address, and somebody could file a freedom of information request and get that uh, from the filing, but it doesn't appear as though it's showing up on the website after you post it, but just be aware of that. And one of the other things that I will do is take the petition when we're done with it and also submit that as a filing, but it is far more effective for all of you to submit your comments so that we have multiple submissions on there from as many people as possible. Now, what's really important here though is that you stick to the facts. What is your personal experience? How are you harmed? by this encryption standard. And the reason why this is important is because the FCC is supposed to be looking out for the public benefit, and it's going to help them look out for the public benefit if you can describe how the public is being harmed by this. So opinions are great, but facts are more important, especially how you see this playing out in your own personal life. I do wanna share with you what I submitted here. You can pause the video and read it, but I talked about how I can't tune into programming here in my home state of Connecticut. I also let them know that there's some other antitrust implications too because one of these broadcasters recently bought a hardware manufacturer to blow and they could make it easier for their own equipment to work versus that of competing devices and consumers lose choice as a result of that. Now you can also go through the docket and see what other stakeholders are submitting to it including other fellow consumers. And what's really cool is they've got an RSS feed for this too, so you can add it to your RSS reader and keep up with it. My submission that I made last night posted this morning, so it does have a little bit of a delay before it shows up, but it won't be a long one. And I did not find many people talking about encryption, just a few from back in June, uh, but I thought these were good comments worth putting up here. So this is Timothy Marks, and Timothy talks about his fear about the hardware and what it's going to cost if they require encryption and certification. Uh, there was another comment here from Adam Schaefer, another good one where he talks about his personal experience as a resident of Boston 
And right now, almost all of the Boston over-the-air television stations are encrypted. And although they're broadcasting, nobody can actually receive anything. Here's another thing you might want to submit, which is this post from Nick over at Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run Box. He goes into tremendous detail on a post that he made on Friday about how difficult this is going to be to implement and how there really is not a single device on the market right now that supports the encryption natively. He's writing the code from scratch for uh, the HD home run tuners, but if they require the playback device to have it, it's going to be very, very difficult to get this standard implemented and rolled out while maintaining the encryption. And this is a really important point that I will actually be submitting in a separate filing a little bit later today. So if you have some time today, please file a comment and let's keep getting the word out about this. And remember, stick to how this is going to impact you as a consumer or any facts that you think the commission needs to hear about that you can back up with documentary evidence. There's another option on the form here where you can do a standard filing and upload files along with your comment. So if you have more to submit, do that one. But if you just want to write out something quick, just do the express. And again, it doesn't have to be long. Just talk about how this will harm you if it goes forward the way that it is currently going. Now, for the broadcasters watching, I wanted to share with you a little chart that I found that I think is a good analog, uh, pardon the pun, to what the broadcasters are currently doing. And this involves the RIAA, the Record Industry of America, and their revenues that just plummeted when they stopped providing consumers a convenient way to get their products. So the record industry was at their height in 1999 with $23.7 billion in sales for music. Now I wanna note here that these numbers are adjusted for inflation already. So this was the 2023 equivalent dollar amount that they had at their peak. And this was right around the time that portable digital music players started coming into place. And the record industry did not respond quick enough. There was a little bump there on the way down when they did allow Apple to start selling music tracks on iTunes, but they spent more time restricting consumers from consuming their content and less time trying to find ways to meet the market demand. And look what it did to their business. They still haven't recovered yet. And what ended up becoming what consumers used are these subscription services that don't make them as much money as direct sales did. And I fear that this is exactly what's going to happen to the broadcast industry. They bet on the wrong horse by thinking subscription services are the way that they can make the most out of their product here, but consumers are running away to things that give them more choice. And what I think would benefit them greatly is to look at this chart and think about what they're doing here by making their product more and more restrictive. They're pulling it off of satellite TV services because they're not getting enough money. They're locking down public airwaves because they can't get more money from that. So if you're a broadcast executive or a shareholder, you need to think long and hard about whether or not this strategy of restricting your content is a sound one. All you gotta do is look at the record industry or look at the newspaper industry to see what happens when you decide you want the market to go in a different direction than the direction it's naturally taking. There is more demand for content than ever before, and some idiot like me in a basement can make a living doing this. You're not doing yourself any favors here by making it harder and harder for people to see what you have to offer. So take it for what it's worth, but that's my advice, and hopefully you will follow it and remove this restriction and find ways to get yourself out there more within the platforms that most consumers are currently consuming content on. Now let's do an update quickly on the petition. We're uh, slowing down a little bit. We had a very busy two weeks getting this out there. Uh, we're just over 6,200 right now. I really wanna get this to 25,000 and I think we can. And although the FCC has a mechanism for responding, I also think it's equally important to keep this petition number rolling higher because we can submit this. And again, I wanna bring this to DC with the antenna man, uh, not only to members of Congress, but also the FCC and stakeholder organizations if we can get meetings with them. So help us out here. Let's get this number higher. I know there's more of you out there that care about this issue. One thing I wanna make very clear though about this petition, because we're running it on change.org and they implemented a new feature that I was not aware of when I first put this up, which is that they hit you up for money 
and they try to get you to contribute thinking that you're going to be able to help grow the reach of this. And I have updated the petition and also sent out a, an update the day I posted it to urge people not to donate money to change.org for this petition. We don't need any financial help for this. I'm not trying to do this to make money. And the dollars that people are putting in are going to change.org and not to anyone else. And they're not very effective uh, contributions either. So check this out. Uh, unfortunately, $3,800 has been contributed already. And the CPM, the cost per thousand impressions that uh, change.org is charging you is I think higher than YouTube charges for video ads, $53 per thousand. That's ridiculous. And the uh, click-through rate insofar as the actual number of conversions we're getting is 0.34%. So very few people out of the 66,000 that saw it are actually clicking uh, to add their name to the list. So if you have contributed money, I want you to go and ask change.org for a refund. They have a page up where you can do that. They guarantee that they'll give it to you if you ask for it. So please, please, please do not give money to this petition. I don't know how many different places I can word it on there. And the reason why I'm using change.org and not moving someplace else is one, we already started it there, but also it's probably the most effective petition uh, mechanism out there. I just think the way that they're marketing this uh, advertising thing is a bit disingenuous. So just uh, don't give them any money and ask for the refund if you have, and I'll put a link to that page in the video description. So that is gonna do it for this update on our petition. Keep those clicks going. Please share this on your social networks. I was uh, uh, actually kicked out of the AVS forum for sharing this. They don't wanna hear about it there. I think there's some former broadcast executives that moderate the forum. So uh, get the word out any which way you can and let's keep the momentum going here because I think we're gonna make some progress and I do think the FCC, at least this current one, will be receptive to what we have to say on this. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Om De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.